and then Rimao.
awakening in the context of our Zen practice. Awakening that we refer to in Zen is breaking through this shell of this egoic self that sees itself at the center of the universe and sees everything else, the world, nature, other sentient beings, other human beings, as other to itself. That is the little self that we have grown up with, that we became conscious with, that we have presumed to be myself, even up to now. And what we are inviting, or rather what the Zen tradition invites us to is to see through that small self and in seeing through it to realize that it is simply a mental construct that has piled up a lot of karma with it that determines our proclivities, our fears, our anxieties, as well as our so-called talents and our, our gifts. But at the same time, it's still that small enclosed shell that we have with us as we live in the world and as we relate with others. And as long as we are living our life encased in that small shelf, there will always be that fear, that anxiety, that separation, especially given the fact that there is this big reality waiting for us at the end of this earthly journey, namely death. There will always be that anxiety about that fact of death. Our Zen practice enables us to see through that little self and break out of it and see that that which makes me truly who I am is much more deeply connected with each and everything in the universe than I can ever imagine. And that, that which makes me truly who I am really is so far beyond this little small egoic self that I consider myself to be. That the first discovery of it really brings exhilarating joy. But we get glimpses of it along the way. And such glimpses can be given to us and we may not be able to acknowledge its significance when it first comes or when it comes even a number of times. As we open our senses, our sensations to the world around us, to nature, we may have been already given this glimpse as children in our innocent play where we are just involved in something so engrossing that we lose track of time and we are just wrapped in that moment where there is no longer any me or any other and it is simply that game that may have engrossed us then. It may have been a game of hopscotch, or it may have been a game of catch, or it may have been a game of hide and seek where we simply are lost in that. Those are the little joys of childhood that we can remember when we lost the engagement or when we broke through the engagement of the little self and found ourselves really in that world beyond time and space and just dancing in, in it. It could also have been through a sight of something or a hearing of something or it could be the taste of something like the taste of some cakes that grandma made when I was young or the taste of food that my mother may, uh, used to cook for me and so on. Those are the moments that are timeless that we remember in our lives that take us beyond this linear journey of time and 
allow us to taste that world of the timeless. So taking tea in this way is also one such possible gateway. We have a concrete drink before us. I don't know what kind of drink you may have had. So whatever it is, cold or hot or lukewarm, just tasting that drink in stillness can be a gateway to that realm where there is no taster and no taste. It's an invitation every time we not just taste tea, but every time we sit down in the company of loved ones or friends or other associates and partake of food. It is a sacred moment when we are able to partake of the gifts of the earth and as we are able to truly be fully there in that moment, there is no longer that egoic self, but it is simply a celebration of the gifts of earth right here, right now. The historical origins of this tea ceremony itself, that many, most, or if not all of you have already heard about in the context of the warring states in Japan, where soldiers gathered together, pausing from their battles and just took tea together in those somber moments, not knowing who was going to die with the next round of battle, but just taking that precious moment as a way of celebrating one another's being, where those precious moments that have been handed down through generations. And this is what we also partake of from that tradition. People all over the world have their customs of drinking beverage. And a lot of these traditions come with it. But for us, this is the invitation to take it in that particular way in the context of our practice. A way of breaking through our egoic self and tasting the world that is intimate, more intimate than we can ever imagine within ourselves. That word intimate that I'm using in English comes from a Chinese word pronounced in Japanese called mitsu, or I believe it would be mi in Chinese, that which is really the secret, the innermost, the holy of holies in the Jewish tradition, the holy of holies, or in, in also in the Hindu tradition where no outsider is allowed, that place where I can find my own true home. And it is available to us as we settle into that stillness and find that home that is truly without any walls and that is open to everything in the universe. And that is the home that also welcomes all beings and hears the sounds of the world and is able to welcome them and is able to embody those sounds in its own being. But first, let us taste that place that is most intimate. If you still have any drop left in your cup, and you, your cup is still there with you, I'd like to invite you to, again, take a sip. And for just one minute or two, relish that sip together as we face one another in this mode and just let it take us to that realm beyond this egoic self in tasting that tea or the beverage that you have and allowing us to bring us to that place of the intimate. Wait, that place of the intimate is that which is, as I noted in the words of Augustine, more intimate to us than we are to ourselves. 
but that place of the intimate it also is also beyond anything that we can ever imagine beyond anything and transcends all our ideas and thoughts and conceptions about what is it is both most intimate most immanent and most transcendent in the monotheistic traditions that is what is referred to by the term god whether you believe in god in your own belief system or whether you that term makes any sense to you put it beside you and just taste of that intimate go home come home to that place of the intimate and let that take you beyond your egoic self beyond anything we can ever imagine and find there a place that is holy where everyone is welcomed and everyone is our kin let us enter into silence in that spirit <laughs> 